That is all yeah, right. I don't remember that particular play. I know that we had, you know, different events. Everybody would get together for an announcement. Did they, get, did they bring us in there for the, when they got ready for the shot? They would give us shots. We yeah. may not have to go to the auditorium for the shot. The last, the last shot we took, uh, I remember we took a Bible Nation. Uh -huh. We was out there to, for you go into the school out in the, when you're in the hall. Uh -huh. It's all real out there. But they had the, the truck pulling the truck here, didn't have no good big auditorium. They had a sophomore freshman ball there, the prom or something. Well, they had the auditorium decorated. I ain't like it. That's what you <coughs> was, that, who, 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 was that Murder? Yeah, Murder. They pulled it, didn't have a good auditorium. No. Well, they were well, coming out of the school hours. Right right that's that's new to me. No. The, the Murray School used to the come out. School hours were right there at the Friendship Baptist Church. That's where the school hours were. That one burned down, I thought. I don't know what they done with it. After they built the other thing, it wasn't big enough. They didn't have an auditorium in here. That was before. That was before they flopped, before they built the thing and put the auditorium in the building. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They had their sophomore freshman ball there, and then they had a prom. Yeah, that's Springfield. Yeah. So I guess that was because Springfield had an auditorium that yeah, was big enough. Yeah, right. Well, huh. the Law Cabin's building, they had a real big auditorium. Yeah. That is awesome. But see, the one that had one, one was that fell out uh, by the Friendship Church. I don't know what it is or not. People put them big enough. I doubt it. I they tore it down or something. There's something. Yeah, something you know, happened to it. A lot of folk, <clears throat> I don't know why they didn't try to keep it going, sell it up. They just tore it down. Okay, so were your parents encouraging y'all to go to school? They they was uh, behind you, what oh, you were doing? Oh, they were down the road like a hood of power. Shit, I thought they were talking about me. Well, well <laughs> since we knew how she was with you, I was just going to, I fell right on in line. I didn't, I didn't give her no back talk. What, you mean she had to make Spencer go to school? Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the way to the way up. All the way to the way You mean she walking behind you? Yeah. That's right. If she talk, I thought she was going to she, she, she talk about it. Lord. <laughs> Spencer, why were you I so different? <laughs> she had a switch at you, didn't she? All right. Oh, restroom. She had the restroom. I'm serious. When right. I get inside of the school, I'm about to wear a lot going on there. You had to go on there because the folk was definitely standing. Look like when she was sick. My mom had killed me when I got back home. Then that was y'all. I ain't nothing about it. Y'all been beating your head to death. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so Uncle Floyd learned from you, and he went on and didn't give her no problem. Floyd ain't never give her no problem. Tell him about, uh, I think he was slipping the way I stayed past you with the school or something like that. No, oh, one time I got out by the cabin house, had to look down at myself, had on Florida thing. You shot me, way up my leg. Had to pull the rope up there. So you got on Uncle Floyd's pants. Uncle Floyd pants. Didn't got realize. Got out by the cabin house. Had on the wrong pants. Boy, you were a mess, sure enough. But then you uh, was talking about your shoes. So they let you have a pair of shoes you wanted to wear to school. And you would um, hit them out here. Hit them out here somewhere. Oh, so you can change. You don't remember about that. Well, see, you remember, hey, we had, we had, shoes. we had, we were lucky enough to have a pair of Sunday shoes. Sunday shoes. Sunday shoes. Sunday shoes. Everyday shoes. Everyday shoes. You wore them every day. Sunday yeah. shoes. They wore the church. Yeah. You didn't wear them to school. The Uncle Spencer was gonna see them where he. Right there, but I, I know. I, that's kind of different. You remember that white lady? She went to work for the scout. Oh, really? Oh, she was that bit over or she was fat more. She was yeah. no, she was trying to see mama. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was, was way later, but she. I guess she was actually. Oh, she was in the car. She wanted you to come out here to come out to mama house. She used to get a shot. I know she gave the shot. She put them shot. And the other lady down there at the school, at the school building. There she comes back. Yeah, so again, yeah, she was a, a, did she become a real doctor or was she just a nurse? She was just a nurse. So, okay, what was graduation like? Y'all graduated in the auditorium. Was it like a commencement oh, exercise yeah, now? Graduation, no graduation was for the... No ceremony for yeah, graduation. Y'all been with uh, last year's school to get them phone calls and come with me. Really? Yeah. But, okay, but Calvin yeah. Turner has a diploma. Graduate. Yeah, y'all didn't graduate from that. We didn't graduate from that. What, what it's really? We planted the maypole down there in the school, in the auditorium. So nobody graduated from there except for maybe my mother, Lorraine, yeah, John Wallace, and Rock. Okay, 
right. Because I know Captain Turner has a diploma from the Springfield yeah, School. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they, had a, they went to the level grade, but right. they had stopped that. You know, Ernest, when she, she was, I think it's Ernest T. but she was here. Okay, Atlanta. she was in Atlanta. Yeah. So, Uncle Flo, what did you do after graduation? After you graduated, what did you do? Wait a minute, are you talking about from... A after you after you after you graduated from from down here, and you went to Murden. Yeah. Well, okay. Once well, you graduated, where did you go from there? Oh my my um uh, the first well, I graduated in '64. Mm-hmm. And in, in September of uh, that same year, '64, I went to school with the uh, Fort Valley State Fort Valley College. Oh, yeah. Awesome. It wasn't it was Fort Valley State College, the university down there. That's right. Now, yeah, I went to that down there for that my first year. Mm-hmm. Daddy borrowed the money from Uncle Buddy. Oh. And so that's how I was able to go to school. Yeah. And it was real cheap back then. It, I well, I, I said never cheap. heard that. Yeah. He, he left the loan and took the money. Well, that was what it was called. He was going, yeah. going to get the money. He was going to go to school. And uh, so I didn't go back the next year. And I didn't, I didn't want to keep borrowing money. <laughs> For some reason, I didn't want to borrow money from Uncle Buddy yeah. anymore. So I didn't, I didn't worry about it. Um, your heart. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that worked out. Um, I, I, served my, I served my three years. Well, I had to go to additional training, advanced training. But that, some of that was right here in uh, Fort Benning. Well, like, um, field radio repair training, some of it was right here in Fort Benning. Awesome. So you did, you did go uh, international, though, didn't you? Didn't you go overseas or not overseas? Well, they sent me, yeah, once, once my uh, advanced training was over, yeah, they sent me into went to Germany for a while. And I also, after a certain time, a little time in Germany. Well, I really, I went through Germany. We was in France. 
Oh, actually, I signed him to a place in France. That's what I don't know if they put the call in. NATO group, the mm-hmm. international group, organization of, of countries. Mm-hmm. And um, so we was in France for a while. Then we, we, I was reassigned to, to near Brussels, Belgium. So I served three years in the, in the military over there. Awesome. So Uncle Spencer, where did you go after you graduated? Or did you quit? You quit like Uncle Avery. <laughs> you had another being beat down the road. So once you dropped out, where did you go? To work at the Rock Quarry? Yeah, we <laughs> he has a heavy mouth. Yeah, you, uh, what did he do? Yo, 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 you went to Tuscan at the Knox River. You and Joe helped build this road. Yeah. Which well, road? The one Springfield? Yeah, y'all, y'all, we helped build this road in Athens or something. Yeah, I know something. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, I worked here, me and Joe Martin Jr. working on for Knox. We went with Knox. Knox River. They built that road. Four lane going through Athens, y'all. Yeah. Then I, I drove that truck, the water truck out there, but this road and the road that was going toward Wilson Ever. Right. The road that line of video. Auntie kept that hat. Wouldn't hand go out. With him, but I wouldn't Auntie go. Kept that hat. Out. I made good money with him. Good. Even though I guess it's just all. Yeah, I made a good. That was a good job. Yeah. Awesome. That was, that was a good job. Yeah, and after that, you start working in something. Yeah, in the rock factory. <laughs> See, he, but he knew. I was cutting buckwood. That's what I was done. I went for Willie Paul, street money at the sawmill. Never made forty hours a week. You know, I went back to cutting buckwood. What you mean never? His sawmill, the sawmill, sawmill was break down and log went on log catching meal and he had regular stuff. They had to walk the shell trying to get paid on. Yeah, on Saturday. Two o'clock, we got your money. Hey, I walked up there for a second. You didn't have no car? That's pitiful. Yeah. And course, you went, but the crazy part, the rest of the guys, Rudolph and uh, R and all, they done gone on up there at nine, ten o'clock in the morning. Like, hell, you gonna sit around up sunshine for all them cricket and cricket and drinks and honey bars and buying your sausage and potted meat and studying. <laughs> The man gonna take it out. Yeah, that's what the man was looking for. That's, that's what I, 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 I was doing with that other day. I threw my hand. He was, he was sitting right up there. When he got back from Union Point with the Emilio, Ruben Flint in the bank had done picked him out for him. He came to his brother Jack. Jack went to the fuel stove. He took the money out. Before he gave it to the you, That's right. He, he put it in a different envelope. Put them tickets in the air and put them in the bounce. And then he passed them out. <laughs> Ain't that something? That was a that was a gimmick. Get your money for you before you, know, before you get it. A hundred boy was a dime. They used to be good. You talking about they used to be good. When they first come out with them, yeah, they 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 a hundred boy. Oh, oh, <laughs> they still good. I still got a hundred boy. Okay, now the school down here was closed in 1955, but um, there was a time frame between 1955 and 1965 where what was going on? Do y'all remember what was they what would happen in that well, school? Well, we don't have a record hop. Record hop. Is that when you became a disc jockey? Yeah, sure. Did you go to school to be a disc jockey? No, no, Just no. took it up on your own. Just it up. And why you chose Doctor Bop as a name? Got to have some name. Got to have some catchy name. <laughs> Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. And so you start spending the records. Right. Took your own money to buy the record player. Yeah. And the speakers. Yeah. I, I, I owe about $30. I never had his money. But he got his money. But look. Oh, you gave him his money. No, I, no. Who are who? 
I, 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 I owe him $30. I don't know nothing about it. Well, I don't know if you get a, the M5, you know, the M5 had to pay loud. I ain't know I had $30. I don't know if I had to pay loud. Let me $30. I bought them, bought the M5 for $30. But he was listening to that. We were here playing music. He was listening to that music. He didn't have some interest in the music he was listening to. Price, what, 25 cents a ticket or something? No, it doesn't uh, no more than, I believe it was a dollar and something. Okay. To go in for the band. Okay, so in 65 is when the marching and stuff started, and it seemed to me the school was used for part of the uh, civil rights registration, yeah. Yeah, they uh, voters the, registration. They call it freedom school. Okay, so it was a freedom school for that time frame yeah, during the march. Yeah, they had a daycare. See, my head started. Head started yeah, my head started going in there. You weren't quite old enough when you went. Well, that when uh, Florence Turner was over the head start. Yeah. Florence was a teacher, yeah. I think I was her age, Florence. Oh, awesome. Okay, now, Auntie Anna, tell us how you got involved with the school doing, when it was the sixth screening plant. Because I think you, you could, we never asked you where you went after graduation, but tell us where you went on from graduation, oh. how you got involved. Okay, after graduation, I worked the summer with Head Start. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I went to Atlanta. Um, I got a job at Sears, but I was just working part time, so I started going to school. So I was going to school in, in the morning and going to Sears in the evening. Now you were going to a school that the name changed. It, you was yeah, it was Hope Smith's Technical School when I was going, but they were when I was going, they was in the process of building a new school. So it's called uh, a Atlanta Area Technical School. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but my, my diploma says Hope Smith. Uh, so while I was working in Sears, Calvin Turner came in there one day. And uh, I don't know, I don't know he, he was asking me about school and stuff and what was I going to do when I finished. And I said, well, I just want to get a job and go to work. So he said, would you consider coming back now and working at the plant? I thought, well, yeah, I guess I could. I'll be coming home. So I came back down here and started working at the plant. And that's where I worked till I got married. I went back to Atlanta. Okay. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, you did work at the plant. Who you worked with? The oh. Who was in the office? What uh, what y'all actually oh, did? Was a I was a secretary and um I met lots of wonderful people, such friendly ladies that I met. We talked and talked and um Did you mention Calvin Turner, but that should have been Robert Billingsley. Yeah, Robert Kevin Turner was there doing whatever, and Robert Billingsley, and we always had somebody else from maybe like uh, whoever was sitting, whoever was giving us money. I remember Mr. Sheridan; he was very nice, and we had another man, Fred Free. He used to help them with the out in the plant itself, and there was another little lady from Mississippi. She was really good at sewing, but she would help out in the plant. But basically, my little group. I was with Dr. Harris at some point. I'm not sure when Dr. Harris come in, but Dr. Harris was there. And uh, with me, Franklin Manigo worked back in the office too. I'm not quite sure what he what he used to do. <laughs> he might have been, I don't know what he used to do. But I was doing the phone, um, and uh, I was keeping the books. I was keeping up with um, the money that was coming in and going out. 
action of balancing the book. And I got really good at it. And, and Dr. Um, Mr. Richardson, he was a CPA from Atlanta. He was helping me. He come and set the books up for, for me and told me what to do for, for what prophecy I needed. And I had learned how to do all this stuff in school. But he set the books up for what the plant needed. So I kept up with what was going out, what was coming in, and how much money they had to work with. And uh, if I ran into a problem, all I had to do was call Mr. Richardson. And and, and, and the nice thing about it, after I left Crawford's and went to Atlanta, he gave me a job in his office. Awesome. So um, that's about basically what I, re what, what, what I remember I had to do. The people Cooper was there, but he was a mechanic. But it was just nice ladies over there. I just said, I used to enjoy talking to all of them. And, um, and what was Mr. Richardson's office that was in Atlanta, you said? He was an accountant. His office was on Jephthah Street, right across from Pasco Brothers. So we used to go over to Pasco Brothers and get us some ice cream some, some days for lunch. They make the best banana <laughs> But they have since moved, too. But they make the best banana spring and fried chicken. It was a restaurant and hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pasco Brothers. That's very popular. Yes, yeah, a popular place. They still got the restaurant. You know, the older people are dead, but they still run the restaurant. But I think they sold the hotel to the school system, the college system, the black college system. But that was a enjoyable time. And then that, during that time I was older, I fell in love and <laughs> got married. Okay, so that takes us to, that would have been 65. So that, that means they would have had put the kitchen and plumbing would have been in the building at that time. Yeah, 65. Yeah. Yeah, it's 65, yeah, so we was, we was, because the children ate over there. This, this, this lady was the cook. Who was the cook? Miss Letter. Miss your letter? Clyde Miller wife. Yeah, she would cook. Who wife? Clyde Miller. My Clyde. Yeah, oh, you don't know about me and your Clyde. Okay. <laughs> I'm, she's, I'm, I'm Casper Meadows' granddaughter. <laughs> so, well, well, no, she, not, 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 not that one. These folks stayed, these folks stayed over there. These folks came out of there. Okay. J.C. Oh, Meadow people. No, no, no. no. Okay, no. The Oliver granddaddy was a union point. What a grant. And are you going to hold her? How can marry her daughter? Yeah. Wait a minute. Miss Tessie? Hold her. How can they marry her? That's right. That Miss Tessie? That was not Miss Tessie's daughter. Tessie is that woman's daughter. No, what Tessie you talking about now? Tessie is Thomas' wife. That's right. That's that lady's daughter. She was a man. I didn't know that. That's her daughter. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> she was crazy about this test. She used to, she worked for her. Well, awesome. She worked for her doing what? Where is Miss Hackman at? Where is her two children at? You know what? One was in the classroom with me. I have not seen him but once. That's when Ortega died. That's all the boy. I don't know if I, I wouldn't know if Tampa was going on. Where is Miss Hackman? Where is Miss Hackman? But she used to go, she was a, she was teaching school. And I guess your mom went over there and kept her babies for her mm -hmm. while she was teaching and maybe helped her do light cleaning and stuff. Yeah, but I'm thinking they had money. Awesome. Well, she, she was walking to school to teach when she was teaching. Who? Miss Hatton. No way. Well, she couldn't walk over there. Sorry. No, I believe they had a car. Yeah, you know that boy had, had a car. car. Oh, Miss Hatton always had a car. She was walking over there to the schoolhouse here with, with Marvin and Dr. Newman. Yeah, he walked in. When they were mom well, and mom and daughter going to school down there. Miss Hackett walked over there. When Lowry was working for him, she'd have had a car. Well, Hackett always had money. Hackett yeah. always had money. Yeah. Well, Hackett always had money. 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 Oh, here and talk. Well, we used to walk over there to the store when nothing was going on. I'm talking about what you done. Homer Hackman didn't have a car back then. If he had one, he was driving. It must be you, dude. He was driving with himself. She walked the two. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. nobody was driving a car that never missed Ellen. Only car was parked. They don't miss Ellen. Oh, well, that's the only car parked there. You know what I'm saying? So once the civil screening plant closed, and once they moved and moved it to actually it didn't close, it moved to a bigger facility. That means they left the building where you guys was just doing the dances and um, things like that. And yeah, okay. I'm start doing the dance. Very good. The know how club. The know how club. <laughs> so 
Well, all right, gentlemen, that's going to actually wrap us up for today. And it was wonderful. I had a great time. Is there anything y'all want to add that you want to tell us about this new generation that we need to know about, um, that we need to do better, any improvement? Because, you know, we're trying to save the building, but we also want to encourage our youth. So is there any message you want to give? I'd like to add that uh, we should continue to be grateful to our folks family for being able to look forward to educating the, the, the children. And one thing I think that they just emphasize, because you can see about all that work they did to build that Lawrence building, so we should keep them in mind and thank them for thinking about us and going through all that effort to get some expense of this and uh, volunteer to cut the wood once the thing got going in, in, the, in the cold time, you know, someone had to get some wood for the heaters and Something. Sure. So it just, I just wish we could have started doing something. Um, 